Hello everyone! Welcome back to Spiritual Essence. Someone asked me in one of my previous videos to make a video about my technique for uh, performing astral projection. Which I think I may have described in the video where I talked about astral magic, but I'm perfectly fine with um, saying it again, making a video about it, because I know there was a lot of information in that video, so I know a lot of people may not have gotten it all. So I'm happy to go over that again. Um, first of all, for the people who are new to this, um, what is uh, astral projection or the astral realm? The astral realm is the spirit world. And astral projection is the ability to actually send your spirit out of your body to explore the spirit realm and any all other realms without dying. Quite an ability and there's a lot of things you can do. Um, but first, um, a little bit of backstory about how I came to get this ability and how long it took. So, for anyone who's tried astral projection before, it is not an, an easy thing. Some people do have the gift naturally. Um, all they have to do is sometimes will themselves and they can exit their body no problem. And a lot of people do it knowingly when they sleep, but there's a lot of people who don't know it's happening. Sometimes, like, when we have dreams, a lot of the times that's us exploring the astral realm, but we don't really have much control because it is our body basically our minds are still kind of in control subconsciously rather than consciously so it's a little bit difficult to explain but I have been studying astral projection for five plus years now and it just took me recently to find a technique that worked I've read so many books on techniques on trying and none of them were working. The first book I ever read was Demystifying the Out of Body Experiences by Louis, oh, sorry, Luis Monero. And it's a good book. I love that book. And I've read it so many times. But none of the <clears throat> techniques actually worked for me. It wasn't until I read DJ Conway's A Witch's Guide to the Astral Realms that I finally found a technique that worked. And she explains it from a witch's point of view, which I feel like I understand more than Luis Monero's point of view because he views it as more of a teacher or um, almost like a parapsychologist would. So I responded better with her technique and I finally like when I tried the technique that she talked about and it worked, I was so excited. Now, the thing is, this technique, while it may work for me, it may not work for you. So I'm going to go over what works for me and then I'm going to go to some backup ones in case they don't exactly work for you. But I do encourage you that if this does not work for you, explore, experiment, practice. It took me five, at least five years to at least get a technique that worked. So it's not usually a quick solution thing. So uh, first, before we begin, uh, what do we do to start? There is a process. <clears throat> so, number one, you're going to have to make sure that you're comfortable. If you just came home from work, decompress a little. Do what you should. Uh, do what you do to relax. Either if it's watching TV, um, playing a video game, reading a book, taking a shower or a bath, what have you, just to relax a little. Make sure that you're in a right state of mind. If you're really angry or emotional, I would not suggest doing that because you're not gonna get a successful reaction. So clear your head. I would suggest a little bit of meditation. Um, the video that I made where I talk about Velo, which is a way to loosen up your energy, I actually got from Luis Monero's book, Demystifying the Out-of-Body Experience. Um, 
I would suggest that you look at that video because it does work with loosening up the energy and making the spirit more flexible. Because if you're emotional or angry, your energy is going to be locked up. It's going to be tense and it's going to be near to impossible to actually have a successful spirit um, a projection. So, um, if all that is set, make sure that you are wearing comfortable clothes. I would suggest loose fitting clothing, sweatpants, sweatshirt. Technically, if the weather permits and privacy permits, you could actually do this naked. But not everyone is ready for that. So if, uh, at the least, loose fitting clothing would work. Um, now where would you do this? You can technically do this on the floor. You could do it on a bed. You could do it in a chair. To give you some advice, if you're lying down for this, you run the risk of falling asleep before you actually do this. So if you're worried about that, I would sit upright in a chair. Make sure the chair has actually arm holders. Because uh, once you have a successful projection, you might find your body kind of going limp and slumping over. I remember that I did this once upright like this in my bed. I was basically sitting and I went into a full projection and I went like this and I actually hit my head against the wall and it hurt. And not only that, it interrupted my projection, which caused my spirit to tense up and it was hard to get back into that meditative state. So make sure that you are safe. <laughs> um, above all things. So if you were to do it like I did, I would take a nice comfortable pillow, soft, fluffy, put it against here, and I would lean against it like this uh, and like safely have your head against the wall and kind of lean back a little bit. That way you're not completely lying down, but you're at least in some sort of comfortable pose. So that's what I would suggest. And a lot of people I know have uh, back problems, maybe a sore back. This definitely helps. Um, you can also do the dorsal technique, which is another thing in Luis Monero's book, where you lay down flat and you have pillows underneath your legs, feet, like... So underneath the midsection of your legs, your feet, underneath your elbows and your hands, as well as one up like underneath your head. And it kind of gives you an uplifting feeling that kind of gives you the feeling like you're floating. So it, it does help a little bit, but I've often not used this technique. I'm normally in my bed. I've lied down for this. Now I will do astral projection sometimes before I go to sleep which a lot of people don't recommend because if you want to have a full projection and write it down, you don't want to be falling asleep because you'll forget. But I find it's, it not only helps me fall asleep, but it also provides me with more lucid dreams. Uh, next step, control all distractions in the environment. If you're doing this during the daytime, I would suggest drawing the curtains, making the room a little darker. Um, try to control too much bright light. I would turn off artificial light and I would shade natural light. You don't want things to be too bright. Otherwise, you'll never really go into a full concentrative state. Uh, next thing, sound. You obviously don't want to have the TV going for this. You don't want loud music going. Now, there are some things that you could do. You can put on noise-canceling headphones or earbuds and listen to soft music. 
nature sounds, like maybe a flowing stream or maybe crickets in the night. Um, binaural beats, which are frequencies that are said to alter brain waves to help you meditate. I have listened to them before while doing actual like meditation and they do help. And there's a lot of YouTube videos for this. Um, obviously though, if you're doing this like on a laptop, like I've got here, I would make sure that the brightness is down. That way it doesn't distract you. Um, the light that I could suggest would be okay would be candlelight. Like uh, I tend to focus better at night. I don't understand why. But I always seem to be more energized at night, more focused at night. I'm a creature of the night. So um, sometimes I will light a candle or two, but make sure because you're going to be unconscious, essentially. And depending on how deep your meditation goes, who knows how long you'll be out. <clears throat> so I would make sure that they are in a safe place and there is no risk of them burning anything in your room, let alone yourself. Safety first. Safety first. Once all that is dealt with, choose your comfortable position. Close your eyes. Take a few deep breaths. Clear your mind. Now picture in your mind a place where you would feel absolutely comfortable. An example that I use, which is basically what DJ Conway suggested, it's called the spiritual garden. And it is essentially you're out in this big garden, there's flowers, there's sunlight, um, there's butterflies and bumblebees and a nice cobblestone path and things like that. This is my spiritual safe place. Basically your spiritual home base. So if you play video games, it's basically like home base where you're most safest. You got all your supplies, you know the surroundings, and you can definitely be guaranteed that you're safe here. So. It doesn't necessarily have to be the garden. It could be anywhere. I've also done things where it's been a temple. I've been in my own temple. And I've also created one where I'm wading in a river that is gently flowing and I can feel the water and I'm, I'm like up to my waist in the water and there's an altar before me. Because I like water. I'm very, I love water energy. So, it's so free-flowing that, of course, I can vibe with it. I feel safe. I feel comfortable. You can make it day or night. You basically use your imagination to create your home base, whatever you want. Even if it's another version of your own house, that's fine. That's fine. So once you complete that, download yourself into this new plane of existence. And what I mean by that is... Feel your arm, move your fingers a little bit while picturing this place, and visualize the spirit arm in your body being transferred to this place until eventually you see your entire self in this place. Now, using your mind, I know it's hard to explain, but bear with me. So take a look around with your mind's eye, and eventually you'll find yourself moving your spirit body without moving your physical body. And once you get this feeling, it becomes a lot easier. Take a look at your spirit hand. Move it. Take a look at your other hand. Look at your feet. You'll tend to find yourself floating. You'll feel lightweight. If you have pain in your physical body, you won't have pain in the spiritual realm. Pain does not exist because it's only in the mind and body. So, <clears throat> Now, once you've downloaded yourself and you can definitely feel yourself becoming more real in this new realm, 
turn around to, until you see a cobblestone well. Just an, a nice cobblestone well. That's it. Move yourself over to it. Look down. You'll see a dark hole. You won't be able to see the bottom. You'll just see a dark hole. Before you, using your bare feelings, think about everything that made you mad that day. Everything that you're worried about. Anything that makes you sad or angry. Think about that and transfer it into a ball of energy before you. Until you feel yourself completely devoid of all these negative feelings and things. You will see before you an energy ball that is completely like black or brown. It's just dark muck like color. Now take it and throw it down the well and then seal the well using your imagination. What I tend to do is envision a lid going over it, a metal lid. It goes like this, and then there are bolts that just go ching and seal it. That way the evil cannot come back up. You're basically banishing negative energy from your body so that you don't attract anything negative. Now, take a look at the cobblestone path. There should be a cobblestone path. Follow it. Usually when I follow it, I go to a nice gazebo outside. And it's within this gazebo that I've cast a lot of my astral spells. So usually there's like a marble altar in the center of it. If you want to cast a spell, you can. <clears throat> if you just want to float about in the garden, that's fine. I highly suggest that for your first time. That way you at least get the feel of astral projection and how it all operates. Now, if you go past the gazebo, you're going to keep following the path until you reach this golden gate. Yes, the bars are literally shiny gold. Now, you can see the path continues beyond the gate, but you can't really see what is beyond the gate. You can't really see too much ahead. It is here that is the portal to the other worlds. Now, it is from here that you can choose to go back in time, visit a god or goddess. You can explore things in the earthly realm. You can explore things in the astral realm. It is from here that is basically your portal. Basically, like in a video game, there are portals to different levels. Basically, this can be for any level. I would highly suggest that you call upon your spirit guide. Now, everyone has a spirit guide. Everyone has an angel that watches over them. If you know them by name, call them out. You can do it in the physical, too. Just say, I ask for my spirit guide to please be present. I need your help guiding through where I want to go in the astral realms. And usually they'll come. You can talk to them, and they're very nice. Um, don't be afraid of them. They're very, very, very nice. Like some of the nicest beings that you would ever come across. They don't have judgment. They don't have anger. They don't add stress to your life or anything. They're very calm, soft-spoken beings. Very, very, very light beings, I must say. <clears throat> it is from here that you can ask them to guide you to where you want to go. For example, if I wanted to go to visit a god that I pray to often, but I wanted to actually talk to them in the spirit world, I'd say, excuse me, could you please guide me to so-and-so because I really wish to speak with them. And usually they've held out their hand and say, grab my hand and we will go. And when I do this, all of a sudden the gates open and all of a sudden we're transported and flying above the clouds. And it's incredible. It's an incredible feeling. It, it, you really feel lightweight and like nothing can hurt you. You just feel this rush of vigor and, and ecstasy. And it, it, it's amazing, uplifting, energizing feeling. And um, it doesn't matter what your faith may be. They don't judge, and they accept all. Um, 
places I would suggest you go the first time you are astral projecting or if you're a beginner in astral projection, I would highly suggest that you go to the Akashic Records. It is from this place that you can seek out your past lives and who you've been and who you are now, why you've become who you are now, and what qualities from your past lives are still present in your life. You can find all that out in the Akashic Records. And uh, the spirit guides will actually take you to it and they will show you the right tome to look at. And they will be extremely helpful in this regard. Uh, where else? Where else? Um, really, it's your... The astral world... I'm not going to say it's limitless. Because even though it is, there are levels to things. If you're not ready to see something, you won't find it. Or you won't see it. Or you won't understand it. But explore. If there's a place that you think, hey, I've always wanted to go. Even if it's a planet thousands of light years away. And I've done that. And I'm going to make a video about that. Just to let you guys know what happened. But this is how I asked to project. And to end the astral projection, you just say, I wish to return to my body now. And you may feel yourself like flying towards your body and all of a sudden you start to get feeling back in your arms, your legs, and you start moving around. I would highly suggest that when you first come back to your body, you're going to be a little groggy. So take some time, move your body, move your hands, move your legs, get the feeling back. Because if you just try to go, okay, I'm, I'm up, you might fall or... A trip and nobody wants that so just give it some time and you'll be back and you can repeat the process and I would highly suggest when you come back from your astral projections that you write them down everything you saw everything what's the uh, at what date did you see them what what was the day what did you see what did you hear what important things did you learn what did you do um, and there's even some people who suggest that you should write down what you were feeling when you learned these things. So what were your feelings during this astral projection? So if you want to add that, that's fine. Uh, but keep a detailed log. Um, as of late, I haven't been keeping up with my log. That's the thing. But I, when I first started, I was writing down practically every night and it, it was incredible how I've forgotten so much and now that I've written it down it's better but unfortunately I haven't written down every single thing so I need to get back on that but it's a better way to remember things and learn more about yourself in the astral realm so that is my technique it may not work for you it might and I would like to hear from you guys if you tried it and how it worked if it doesn't work the first time do not get discouraged and just say oh this is crap I I'm not gonna be able to do this that's what I thought too when I found that book and I was learn trying to learn it because they just weren't for me um just keep trying keep practicing and after a while if it doesn't work try something else eventually you'll find it out if you're determined enough now other uh, techniques that I've learned are actually uh, visual <clears throat> so, number one is the stair technique. Basically, it involves imagination. I'm very good with my imagination. I can picture things. I understand not everyone is. But um, for those of you that are, bear with me on this. So, picture yourself on a staircase. And it leads up. Higher than you can even imagine. Begin your spirit to start walking up these stairs and keep walking. Don't be in such a hurry. Just just walk, walk, walk. Since you're a spirit, you won't get tired. So just keep walking. And as you feel your energy quicken and actually begin vibration, you're going to see a door. The door can look like anything you want, but it's a door. And you'll know that on the other side is the astral realm and the more your energy the higher your energy gets 
the sooner you can get to that door. Keep going until you can actually touch the doorknob, turn it, and open it. And you should. Now, while this technique t actually got my vibration up, my vibrational energy, I was unable to actually pass through the door and go into the astral. It, it never happened. Another one is the wave technique. Imagine yourself in an ocean and the waves are lifting you up. Feel them lift you up. Feel them take you down. You're not in any danger. There's no sharks or nothing. There's no storm. You're not going to drown. Don't think of any of that. Just feel the climax and feel the decline. Just keep going and imagine the waves getting bigger and bigger, taking you higher and then going wee until they eventually reach you very, very high. Until they actually shoot you up into the astral world. Once again, this was able to increase my vibrational energy, but I was unable to actually astral project with this one. Uh, another one was the velo technique, which I did make a video about, so I'm not going to explain it here, but check out that video, Learning Velo. It's actually a way of loosening up your energy so that it is easier for you to actually leave your body. Now, a few times I nearly had it. I was able to get the energy quick enough to where I was actually, I could feel my spirit energy while my physical arms were like on the ground. And I was like, I could feel it up here when it was down here. But eventually, like, I would think of something and get distracted. And all of a sudden, it was like, and I'm like, mm. So, if it works for you, great. If not, it's a, it's still a great exercise to loosen up your energy and make your spirit more flexible. So, it's worth a try. There is also a technique of turning off all the lights in the room, sitting in a chair, have a candle, a single candle, and stare at the flame. And eventually, keep staring at the flame until you picture it in your mind. Then close your eyes and see this flame. Just see it. See that flame. Now imagine you're getting closer to the flame. And with it, your spirit is actually being drawn into the flame. It's not going to burn you. But it's going to detach your energy because it's sucking you in. And eventually, once it does, you enter the flame and gets just puffed out with the smoke. And all of a sudden, you're in the astral. That's another one that I've heard. I never tried that one. But some people I've heard said it worked. So if it does, let me know. Those are the few techniques that I have... Uh, either tried and haven't gotten anywhere or haven't tried, but I've heard some people say they worked. Um, so that is my main technique on how I actually astral project. Um, basically, the more you do it, the more vivid your astral projections will be. So the first time you may not get a whole clear vision. You might not hear things as easily. You might not see things as easily. The more you do, the clearer things will be. So just keep working. Keep working on things. And don't get discouraged because that's going to lock up your energy and take even longer. I made that mistake way too many times when I was just like, you know what? Either this is a load of rubbish or I'm just not cut out to do this ability until I finally did it. And now I'm confident that I can do it. And I really hope to teach others to try it too. So if you guys actually have six, whether you have success or not with this ability, I would like to hear from you guys. I want to know if I helped you. So please put that down in the comments. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the like button. So you don't miss any of my future videos, as well as the bell button. And, 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 don't forget to check out my Twitter and my Substack, where I have my own spiritual blog. Have fun astro-projecting, guys.